Right then, so I'm on f g of x now. So I'm going to put g into f. So that would be log of e to the 3x plus 2. Now think about your log laws. If it was 2e to the 3x with the log, I could do something with it. But because it's that, because it's e to the 3x plus 2, I can't do anything with it. So I can't split that up. That has to stay as it is. Uh, if I do g of f of x, I'm going to put f of x into it. i be e to the 3 lots of log x plus 2. There. Now that I can do something with. Because I can take the 3 up as a power. So I've got e to the ln x plus 2 cubed, and then the e and the ln cancel, and I've got x plus 2 cubed on its own. <laughs> Look at that, that's just ridiculous. It's got fractions and fractions. That's just bonkers. Right, let's have a look at this one then. Oh my word. So we're going to do f of g. So we're going to put g into f. So wherever I see an x in f, I replace it with that other fraction. Don't know why I'm laughing. I've got to do it, haven't I? So I've got 3x over x plus 2 minus 1. 3x over x plus 2 plus 5. Now what I can do is I can combine the top as a single fraction, I can combine the bottom as a single fraction, and they'll have a common denominator, each of them, of x plus 2, and then I can flip it and times it. But remember, we've done this before, there's a little cheaty way of doing it, and that's to times the top and the bottom by the common denominator. So if I multiply the top by x plus 2, the x plus 2 on the bottom will cancel out, so I've just got a 3x, and I've got minus 1 lot of x plus 2. On the bottom, if I multiply by it, the x plus 2 will cancel. And I've got 5 lots of x plus 2. Right, so let's have a look then. I've got 3x take x is 2x, and then I've got minus 2 on the top. I've got 3x plus 5x is 8x, and then I've got 5 times 2 is 10. Now, each of these, this will actually divide through by 2, 1, 2. So if I simplify it, I've got an x minus 1 on the top, and a 4x plus 5 on the bottom. <laughs> so now you've got g of f to do, so I'm going to go with that one. So you're replacing the, the x's in this equation with x minus 1, x plus 5. And then you'll multiply through top and bottom by x plus 5. Look, see, I'll multiply through top and bottom by x plus 5. So the x plus 5 goes there. There we are. <laughs> nice. Right, so they've got example 4, which is some miscellaneous ones. It's quite, oh my god, there's millions. Millions of these! Right, so I've got f of x is 2x plus 1, g of x is 3x minus 4. Find out what f of g of 12 is. Right, now then. What I can do, I can find the equation for what f of g is and then sub in the 12. Or I can do g of 12 and then put that answer in. So if I was going to do, I'm going to do it slightly different to the pack. So f of g of x is putting g inside f. So I've got that. So f of g of x will be a 6x minus 8 plus 1 is minus 7. And then if I try x is 12, so that's going to be f of g of 12, so it's 6 lots of 12 which is 72, minus 7 gives me 65. Oops, f of g of 12 is 65. What the completed pack was, it stuck 12 in there, 
which gave out what's that going to be 12, 24, 36, 32. And then what it did then is take that 32 and stick it in there. <sighs> so there you are. Right, so the next one, we solve f of g of x is equal to 17. So I know that f of g of x is 6x minus 7. Round up, this sounds like it. My computer seems to be slower than my, what I'm writing. There's a bit of a delay. So 6x is 24. x is 4. There we go. So we've done some solving ones. That's all right, isn't it? Oops. Then, so example five. So I've got x squared for f of x. I've got 3x plus 1. So I've got to find the values of x such that they're equal. <laughs> the f of g of x is equal to g of f of x. Oh my word. Right then, so f of g of x. So I'm putting g into f. That's 3x plus 1 squared. g of f of x is putting f into g. So that's 3 lots of whoops, x squared plus 1. So then are my two composites. So f of g of x equals g of f of x. So I'm saying that 3x plus 1 squared is 3x squared plus 1. So I'm going to have to expand my brackets here, aren't I? So what have I got then? So I've got 9x squared, 6x plus 1 is 3x squared plus 1. I've got 6x squared plus 6x is 0. I can take out 6x as a factor. So then that gives me 6x is 0. So x is 0, going back to GCSE. x plus 1 is 0. x is minus 1. There. Ah, perfect. What do you reckon? Do you think we should do the next one? <laughs> There's loads of questions. Sorry, everyone. Functions is lots of different functions questions. Ah, uh, that looks pretty big, or is it? Yeah, come on, let's do let's do this one. Let's get a question six done, and then we'll do a new vid. So it says the function f has a domain of the real numbers. A sketch of the graph is shown on the right. <laughs> Explain how to find f of. <coughs> f of what minus 1.5. Right, so if I put minus 1.5 in, I get 0 out. So f of minus 1.5 is equal to 0. So that's the first bit. So then if I put 0 in, f of 0 is equal to 5. Therefore, f of f of minus 1.5 is equal to 5. So I've stuck the 1 minus 1.5 in to give me 0, and then I've stuck the 0 in to give me 5. <laughs> so f of f of 0, right then, so let's go, so f of nothing is 5, and then f of 5 is 7. So f of f of 0 is equal to 7. So I've stuck in the 0, it gave me 5, and then I stuck in the 5, it gave me 7. I don't know if that kind of makes sense. I'm definitely stuck in there, though. Uh, oh, no, shall we? Oh, yeah, go on, we'll stop there. Want to be short?